Hey guys, welcome back to another West Coast Shaving Daily Shave. I'm your host, Gerardo Jimenez. Today, we got a shave going for another uh, 15 hour shift this Sunday morning. Uh, today, we're going to be using a good old British favorite. This is True Fit and Hill. This is sandalwood. Uh, we're going to be using the matching balm. Today's brush is going to be a Dogwood Handcrafts. This is a, um, an Aurora. So it's, uh, I don't know, hopefully you guys can see that, but there's a lot of really beautiful shades of blue going on in the handle. No coin in the bottom as is before. He put the coins in and it is a uh, unique shape in his design. I specifically had this uh, made for my birthday and he was generous enough uh, to work with the design that I had in mind. And the knot is a 23 millimeter or 24 millimeter, I think, AP Shave Co. Luxury Knot. It is a Badger Bore Mix. And uh, I really have been enjoying this knot quite a bit recently. <clears throat> uh, today's shave is actually going to be dedicated to uh, my buddy Mark over in Turquoise Devon. I'm just going to block out his address here. He was kind enough to send me this in a package a long time ago, and he had a um, a handwritten note inside. A while back, I had sent him my Rex Ambassador to use, and as a thank you, he sent me this shaving cream, and uh, I, I really like it a lot. So thank you, Mark, so much. If you're watching this one, goes out to you, buddy. Cheers. Today's razor is going to be a special razor. Uh, this is an old Ever Ready. And if I can get the case open, there you go. Um, an old Ever Ready. This is the Streamline, made in the 1930s. You can tell because the base at the bottom is hollow, has larger uh, larger cutouts. The 1950s one, I believe, has this much smaller cutout. But I could be mistaken, I'm no expert. So uh, let's rinse the face, wet the brush, and we'll get right into the shape. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So, um, as before, I don't soak my brushes. I just run them under the tap under cold water for like less than a minute and it works just fine. Um, so this is a very soft cream, uh, much like any of the other large uh, British, um, I want to say artisans. Uh, True Fit and Hill is part of the three top or the three T's, I'm told. Uh, you have True Fit, Taylor Bond, and Trumpets, and they all make excellent shaving creams. Uh, this one is no exception. Now this sandalwood is a, I'm just going to go ahead and grab, I grabbed about a dime, dime size amount and just spreading it into the tips of the, of the brush here. Um, now this sandalwood is much different than any sandalwood I've ever tried. As its main note isn't predominantly sandalwood, um, the top notes, based off their website, is built off of lemon and uh, lemon and bergamot, sandalwood, tonka, cedarwood. Um, I have my notes up here: <laughs> lavender, thyme, jasmine, pineapple, and melon. So uh, there's quite a bit going on in this scent, and to my nose, I can't really pick out uh, one distinct note. Now on the brush, mm, well first off I should go on and say that it is a very light scent. I'd give it about a three or a four, so it's definitely on the lighter side. Yeah, definitely on the lighter side. And it smells like a really nice cologne. If I had a to put my finger on it. And it can take a lot of water. Uh, sometime last year, um, and as a lot of you probably know, I'm a I'm a regular member over on Reddit's uh, wet shaving subreddit, and I love the community there. It's a very nice community. A lot of good folks over in that subreddit. And last year we were having the, uh, what 
they, we call the lather games. And the lather games use one brush, one soap, one razor, and if you want to, one blade uh, for the entire month of, I believe it's August. And during that one month, I was using this cream um, with a GE Jones Shake Sharp, which I will showcase in another shave of the day in the future. And I enjoyed this cream immensely. I didn't have a bad shave with it once. It's, as you guys can see, it's really easy to whip up a lather. Um, I generally have less trouble lathering a cream than I do a hard soap because oftentimes with a hard soap, I don't end up, I either end up loading too little or too much. But with the cream, I mean, generally I just put in a dime sized amount and that's enough to give me a, enough lather for about a three pad shave. <coughs> First pass with the green. Um, so as I was saying about the scent, initially I do get that fruity blast of, uh, uh, to me it smells like melon a little bit. But as I mentioned, um, I can't really discern an individual note from the rest of them. So it's a very well blended scent. It is a very unique take on a sandalwood scent. I'll tell you that. And it's a, uh, overall it's a really good scent. So if you're looking to try or check out a sandalwood that sticks out from the rest of them, I recommend this scent a lot. Slickness is great. And this Ever Ready Streamline is just really easy to use. The angle is easy to find. And it's a pretty loud razor. It's very audible. You guys can probably hear. And I was really lucky that I found a cased one. <clears throat> These razors can go for quite a bit on eBay. And they're becoming much harder to find. All right. <clears throat> First pass done. Go ahead and uh, rinse off and we'll be back for pass number two. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back. So I'm gonna adjust this real quick, there you go. So as you guys see, second pass, still plenty of lather on that brush. So what I mentioned, it is a rather thirsty cream. It can take in a lot of water. Now, I don't know how to describe this. Uh, this soap has a, a very peculiar face feel to me is that when I put it on, it, kind of, it feels like I have a lotion on my face and I know it sounds weird, but I can actually feel like it's hydrating my skin as it sits on there. Best way I can describe it, maybe it sounds quirky. All 
hope everybody's been doing well, by the way. And I've been kind of MIA for a while from my main channel. And I keep saying that I'm going to come back, but... And I want to. Things have kind of been hectic lately. I don't want to commit to something if I can't dedicate time to it, you know? And uh, another news, I'm almost done with school. My original major was in sociology. And for the longest time, I wanted to be a police officer. I still do. But lately, I've been looking more into the code enforcement side of things. Every city has a code enforcement agency. And uh, from what I've been told, a lot of folks are going to start retiring from those agencies. So right now is the best time to start applying. And I've been looking for jobs and I've had a couple of good interviews. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off and come back for pass number three. Okay, we're back. Just saying I, uh, I had a couple of really good interviews in the past. And, uh, and back in October, I placed a number one for the code enforcement department in, um, in a neighboring city near my area. I haven't heard from them since October. I just got an email saying that I got the number one spot. And then that was it. So I don't know where I'm at there. Back in February... Um, I got the number two spot at another city nearby and I got a really high score on that interview. I got a, according to the email, I got a 95 and, um, mostly a lot of these jobs for government jobs, in my opinion, well, when you go in for an interview, you get points depending on the, the quality of the answer that you give. So the better your answer, the higher your score. And in my case, I got a 95 and I still placed in the number two spot. So one of my buddies that I work with right now, he's taking a PC 832 course and the PC 832 is the absolute minimum required for a peace officer. Right? And, uh, essentially in, in that class, you talk a lot about like uh, an individual's constitutional rights. Um, a lot of arrest and control procedures. Um, yeah, a lot of, uh, for the most part, a lot of that, uh, it's around that general area. So it's an interesting course, and uh, my buddy's taking it right now. And his professor is actually, uh, was actually one of the members of the panel, of the interview panel that I was on, where I got that number two spot. And their number one guy was a real estate agent. <laughs> a real estate agent. I mean, hey, uh, more power to you, man. But I really felt like I had more experience in that field, considering since I've been working for for the city for the past for the past uh, seven years now. 
So I was actually pretty disappointed to find out that I didn't get that position. But there'll be others, so we'll see. In the meantime, um, I'm still going to school studying radiological technology, so if anything, maybe I can work at a hospital doing x-rays. I hope, you know, everybody starts off doing x-rays, but I hope I can cross-train into doing MRIs and uh, continuing going to school and maybe doing nuclear medicine. But we'll see. And I never thought about, I honestly never considered a job in the medical field, but once I took anatomy and I took physiology, it was all really interesting to me to find out how the human body works. And and yeah, it was just overall a fascinating class. And that's what really picked my interest. Although radiology is probably something I didn't really consider getting into at first. I could see myself getting into radiology. I was considering nursing for a bit, but I'm not good at math, and I know nursing requires some math and, uh, and chemistry, and I'm pretty sure. I think somebody mentioned physics, too. Pretty sure. No, I'm sorry. No, not physics. Physics, ultrasound requires physics. Uh, microbiology, I know. That was one of the requirements. And chemistry. A lot of long hours go into being a nurse. And radiological techs make just as much, if not maybe even more than a nurse. Maybe. Could be wrong. Especially in California. I think California is one of the highest, is one of the better states um, for pay as far as nursing and uh, hospital stuff goes. Because I'm in a community college, all the classes are extremely impacted, and there's a long wait list to get into a hospital just to do an internship. And the internship is one year. And there's a long wait, and it's very competitive. At least I'm trying to do something about finding a better job, because I've been working part-time for the city for seven years, and... I don't want to keep working part-time there. All right. That's three passes done. I'm going to go ahead and do my cleanup off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. So we're going to go ahead and do the the, uh, the bomb now. Just do a little bit like uh, that. And the, the balm has a similar scent to the shaving cream where it's, it's very light but very pleasant smelling. No burn because there's no alcohol in it and it feels it feels really nice. I love I like this balm. I uh so again the the uh the soap is uh true fit and hill. This is sandalwood. This is a gift. From my buddy Mark. So thank you very much, Mark. I, I really appreciate it. It was such a kind gesture. I wasn't expecting anything in return, so it was a pleasant surprise to see that in the mail. And the handwritten note was just a nice touch. Uh, this is the aftershave balm by True Fit and Hill. Sandalwood as well. I purchased this with my own money. The brush is a dogwood handcrafts. This is the Aurora with a 23 or 24 millimeter, can't remember the dimensions, AP Shave Co. Luxury Knot. And the star of the shave was the Ever Ready Streamline. This is the 1930s. And I forgot to mention there is a stainless steel gem blade in there by Persona. Uh, the same kind that you could buy at the CVS drugstores here in America. 
All right, folks. So that was uh, that was my shaves. I hope you uh, guys found it informative. Uh, please leave any comments down below in the comment section. I love reading comments. Thank you guys all for your support. And I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all next time. Take care.